All right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to buff some of the parts. Uh, I got my scotch Bright wheel attached to the buffer, and uh, I'm going to start cleaning up some of the parts. This got a little bit of like dinge to it, so we'll see what we can what kind of finish we can get on this. This is a, this is a showpiece. This this part here will be sticking out for the. nice I like that. <clears throat> Looks like chicken soup without the chicken or the vegetables. <clears throat> All right, so here's what the here's what it looks like. We got some rust inside there that's eh, it might be a little hard to see, but there's some rust in there. And you could just see the way the casting is like a little bit dingy. It's got these spots, these dirt spots. I mean, there's no there's no crumbly kind of rust or anything like that on the sides. This side is pretty uh it's pretty clean actually. So, what's going to happen is when this thing comes out it's going to look you know a lot brighter because rust goes into the pores of the metal and it just discolors it it gives it a darker color so this 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 base here should come out looking really sweet <clears throat> so in she goes <clears throat> actually I'm going to do it this way And you could actually add a little bit of water to this to dilute it. Um, you know, I use this a couple of times over. I'll you know, de-rust some stuff, take it out, put some other things in there. And uh, once it starts to evaporate, it, you know, it thickens up. And I just add a little bit of water to thin it out, and I extend the use quite a bit that way. So, All right, we'll be back when, this, uh, when it's done and ready to show you what it looks like. This is the base taken out of the evaporust. Looks like a brand new piece of metal for all intents and purposes. Right? Here's my plug. Evaporust. Get yourself some. I got the other part of the dividing head in here, the cylinder, the main part. I converted in a, an old garbage can into a soak tank because it fit the parts real well and a whole gallon is in there and it's covering everything I also put some setup blocks that I I just gotten recently in there so uh, we'll give that a little time and I'll let you see that when it's done now that this part is out of the vapor rust um, it can flash up you know you get some surface rust not that it's doing that now but it can so Nice little coating of uh, some thin oil. In this case, got a little bit of gun oil here. And uh, I'm just going to put a little bit here on the rag. A 
can really just give this thing a little film of oil just to protect its newly acquired finish. Just want to give it a nice coating. All right. I'm going to blot some of this off. It is a little oily. Now, for real, there you have it. I'm happy with that. Came out good. Okay, what we have here is the castings, the two major castings. We've got the spindle. And over here, I got all the parts laid out, spaced out nice so I could see them, and, uh, and we could begin putting it all back together again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this piece on. And this is the, the handle. This is where the handle attaches to and some gears and whatnot. This was the last piece that I took off, so I'm just going to go in reverse order and put it all back together. Before we start with any of the major pieces, I want to put these binders in. And what this does is this is going to bind the ways to lock this in place because fumbling around and stuff, this thing is going to move. So you gotta you got to line up these. There's like a, this little V-notch in here, and that's going to... <clears throat> it's going to locate itself onto the onto the ways. <clears throat> there you go. So for some of these really tight fitting parts, I'm going to use a little bit of this sort of like an assembly grease, just a light coating. This is going to be pretty buried in here and it's not going to be exposed to any chips, so the grease shouldn't be a problem. And these are some really tight tolerances here. Now this is going to be, this is going to be Fun trying to get this guy in here ah. because it was pretty fun trying to take it out and by fun I don't actually mean fun I mean it was a real pain so the idea with the strap wrench here is to just kind of get a grip on it <clears throat> and work it in Alright, so the next piece is going to be this washer. That's clean threads for you. Alright, the next piece is this little washer. And this got the, uh, the little grooves in here which allows the oil to move around. Looking good. Next piece is going to be the spindle. This was uh, this was a little tricky 
as well to get out. Needed a little bit of persuasion, gentle persuasion. So I'm just greasing it up a little bit. Alright, so I got it started um, using this little piece of wood and just gently tapping it. And what I did is I pushed it down enough to put these screws in just to get them started. And what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to prevent this thing from rotating on me. At least that's the idea. Try to take up any uh, any slack in here and it almost appears that I could I could screw this down now to bring it back down so I'm gonna get a better screwdriver one that fits a little bit more snug and, and true here hang on one second Yeah, that's more better. A lot better. Fits perfect. The whole length of the screw. And it's just walking this thing down a little bit at a time, each side. And that one. Ooh, that is nice. Real smooth. No hang-ups, no nothing. All right, cool. Now we got the back part to do. And this is where that ring comes in with the, uh, with the oil grooves in it. So this guy goes back here. We have a simple spanner nut. Now that stopped, that stopped tightening down and I think this little bit of end play that you see here, I think that's for the, um, for the, uh, the mechanism that engages and disengages the spindle with the crank. So I'm going to just leave it right now the way it is and move on to the next step. The next piece that's going to go in is going to be the the, the crank that has a, a worm on it which will drive the spindle so we're going to just put a little bit of grease on here and I want to put a little bit of grease on the uh, threads in here bring in some south bend oil here the, the C type, you know, just for some of these shaft parts, just to give it a little bit of slick of oil. So it goes in nice and everything doesn't bind. All right. All right, that fits nice. Now the next part that we have here is this is this is like I don't know what you would call this but it's the end cap for that shaft and it has this you know similarly it has this uh, this piece with the oil grooves in it and this just bolts right to it
I guess they made this a separate piece in case this ever wears out. You could just replace it without having to replace this. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there. And you know what? I'll put some oil on the threads too. Now this has a, right over here, this has a locking nut, so I guess you can, you can adjust this tension. That's nice. <clears throat> Alright, now I'm going to install this part right here, which is the engage and disengage of the handle from the spindle. So let me... Um, It's actually three pieces. Put a little oil here. thing is starting to get heavy again <clears throat> okay so we have it sticking out here now add a little bit more oil to that and a little bit in here and of course oil this outside Now what you have to do is you have to, what, what that's doing is it's tightening up um, over here where the handle crank was. There was that nut that I put on there. These gears here are actually tightening, opening and tightening that. And we have a range here. So you have to tighten it and get it to be tight right at its, right at its, uh, its final range. which I believe would be like that. So now I can loosen it like that and tighten it. All right, I think that's good. And then the next piece is this, which actually does the loosening. Come on. Well, I shouldn't say it does the loosening. This is the locking the locking dial, it locks it in place. All right. So, actually I, <laughs> I take that back. This is the, the thing that tightens it and locks it. Yeah, so now it's tightened right here and it's locked. This outer handle here is what actually moves uh, this in and out, engages and disengages. Okay. Now what that little that little tab does is it prevents this thing from spinning continuously. It gives it a start and a stop point. Alright, I think the next order of business will be um, I'm thinking the the handle, yeah, I'm going to put the handle on, get that all in place. All right, I know that's a specialty screw. Here we go, which is this guy right here. What that does is it provides an anchor point for the, the handle mechanism. Like that. And then we have the handle mechanism right here. Oh, wait, before I do that, the plate goes on. I almost forgot.
All right, now I'm going to put together the plunger, which is made up of a couple parts. The actual plunger with the spring goes inside, <clears throat> and then you put the the knob on it, and it's held in with a little bit of a pin. Yeah, this is a taper pin. Gotta love these taper pins. Let me go get a punch. No, actually, I have a punch right here. This should go right in. And it does. Thank God. Taper pins are, are usually a pain. A royal pain. So let's put a little oil on here. to here let me go get a wrench all the difference. It's got a little little oil dauber. Yeah yeah. Oh you know what I didn't put on was this. <laughs> I'm sure people are looking going, hey you're forgetting that. The sector divider, the sector I don't know what this is called. Sector arm, sector something, I don't know. Alright, I got the sector dividers here. Got them installed. And they're working good. Alright, let's try this again. Alright. Now the last mechanism that we're going to put in here... is going to be the manual indexing which is these guys right here and what that does is it pushes this pin inside and out uh, there's a big uh, manual indexing plate that goes on here that's actually that's still in the rust the de-rust bath right now it's one part that I forgot that I still had in there um, but I can, I can continue on and keep doing this stuff so that has a little spring, a de-dent spring and a little pin, and it it notches right into that little that little dimple. <clears throat> All right, what I've done instead of using the plate is I just this is the edge that the plate is going to rest on. So I just, saw, you know, I just brought this collar up to the bottom here. I put the pin in, lined up the D-dent, and uh, now I'm going to put the screw in. <clears throat> Give it a little bit of oil, like with anything. All right, I got this this uh, plunger working here, and uh, but this screw this screw seems to be too long for some reason. I have no idea why, but there's a there's a little tiny steel rounded shoe, and then there's a spring, and then there's the screw. And when you push the screw in, it compresses the spring and pushes on that shoe that locks into the D-dent. But I mean, right up right at this point you know it's sticking out of the casting right here so this is you know you could say it positively 
locks right in which is good anything else is is too tight so I'm gonna have to do something after the fact but let me continue so this here there's a groove right inside this little shaft right here that locks this from coming out and here's the the set screw so we'll put that in you know and, and the more you tighten it the more this will be um, tight so there you go what happened in shipping with this handle is it broke the person who sent this to me put this into a box a cardboard box so you could tell something this big by the time it got to my house the box was like paper <laughs> so this broke alright so I just put a, a quarter inch pin in here and uh, I'm gonna have to either fix that other one or make a new one so I'll lock that in there all right now the next thing is the spindle binder which has a little it's got this little brass shoe This too has the uh, the old Scott, old style like ball crank handle and a set screw. Okay, now that will bind the that's going to bind the uh, the spindle. All right, <clears throat> before I, I showed we put this in and here's the set screw for that. Not only does the oil make these things go in smoother, but it prevents them from corroding inside. <clears throat> now what's left is these little oil holes. Got them right up here. So let's put some oil down in there. There's one more back here. <clears throat> All right. Got another little oil port right here. I believe that's for the ways. <clears throat> and then the last finishing touch is this little guy right here this little index mark witness mark I should say Put this indexing plate on and see how that looks. It's funny trying to put these things together with the camera. The angles you gotta bend and twist and turn to get this to get it going. Now the pin can be indexed. Hold on, let me get a better screwdriver. All right. Now, the spindle is disengaged from the handle. 
So I could spin this, and now I can index it wherever I need to. Alright, this is going to need a little bit of tweaking and adjustment, but I think, uh, I think it's coming along. We're almost there. Where is that? There we go. We got our dead center and our dog driver. There's some burr in there. Use a circular stone to try to remove any burrs. Man, this is close tolerances. I remember this was this was kind of tricky to get off. Oh, almost. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this in the wooden vise and just tap it down. I'll be right back. Well, there you have it. One brown and sharp number number zero. I'm sorry, number one dividing head. Now it's time to put the tailstock together. And I I I really believe that this thing is either half brown and sharp and half shop made by somebody, um, or, or I don't know, because you know these edges right here are just rough machined um, and it just kind of looks it, it just looks that way because there's these parallels here that this main part sits on and then you have your walls here and it also came with these washers so I took some notes <clears throat> and you could see the uh, the base plate well the tailstock is on the top then washers then parallels then the base plate so Not extend this uh, bolt extends way far out. So Alright, this is the binder, obviously. Oh, this could use some oil. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to put some whey oil on this screw over here. here screw <sighs> oil up the quill get that sucker in there
That's the way I like it. Not rattling around or nothing. And this wouldn't turn when I first got it. All right, well, there you have it. The tailstock's done now. All right, now that it's all said and done, just wanted to give you a quick look at, uh, at both of the pieces together. Looks, looks like a different dividing head altogether, if you ask me. When, when you clean these things up, man, they really, they come back to life. So I think this was about, in total, probably, I don't know, about 16 or 17 hours altogether. Um, you know, taking it apart, degreasing, buffing, de-rusting, and then assembly. So there, there you go. That's what it looks like all done. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. I know I say this a lot, but this really was a fun project. I mean, it, it was textbook perfect. Good price. Bought it. Uh, disassembled it without any problems. No broken parts. Didn't have to put any money into it, which is always good. Um, again, just a, just a great project all in all. Uh, you know, I'll be I'll be using this thing in the shop here for hopefully for years to come. And um, you know, it's it's fantastic to to see something ugly and rusty and and you know forgotten to be brought back to life and to you know to be put back into use so i'm really happy i uh you know again good day today in the shop so you know i'd like to say this too i, I guess you could I, I consider myself the uh the newest member of the machining community videos on youtube um, I've been putting these videos out for a couple of years now, but nothing really serious where I've gotten in front of the camera and, and did a lot of projects. Mostly everything was just you know, slideshows of my restorations and stuff like that. And again, that started off, that started out like um, you just want to show everybody your close circle of friends, so you open up a YouTube channel and it's easy to to distribute videos and stuff like that. But you know, I've I've been watching the videos from Keith and from Adam and, uh, and Mr. Pete Tubalcane and uh, Tom's Techniques, uh, Shop Dog Sam, who else? Uh, a bunch of others that are escaping me now that the camera, of course, is looking at me. Um, but you know, I've, I'm, I'm in really good company. You guys are you guys are um, you know inspirational, and you definitely know what you're doing. So I have a lot to share in my future videos, and and even more to learn. Um, you know. You're not growing unless you're learning. So until then, uh, until the next video, you know, thanks a lot for watching and uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Thanks.